a, a typical day in Soho would have been for me to go into work, set up for that evening, so I know who's going to be coming into the club. And then basically then I'd go down into Soho and I'd start hitting the bars. And then straight away I'd have a bottle of Rioja. And I'd usually consume that with somebody, um, one of my friends, and then more of the gang would arrive and then we'd get onto the champagne. But the whole point was is that we were all fueling each other all the time. And so everyone was coming into the bars and buying more and more drink. So by this time I would have had like two or three bottles of wine in the afternoon coming into six o'clock. And then I would have been, you know, looking to get some coke and to put the, the little night into, into mm -hmm. turbo zone, get it into the red. And that's what I wanted to do. And that's what I was doing. So I was, you know, I was going home drunk, getting changed to go back out again into the same bars, you know, in a, more, in a higher octane environment. And then I was coked up, I was drinking, I was, you know, meeting girls. I had groups of girls around me all the time. They had friends, they called their friends in. Even some of their friends would call in to me where they passed the number on, so we'd be going out partying. So by this time, we weren't eating because there was too much drugs involved in it. You know, anyone who's been in this environment knows that. It's not going to be like, you're going to be eating and, you know, the nutrition of life is out the window. This is about <laughs> excess and madness. You just want to keep it going. So by this time, we'd be on the shots and I'd be doing shots and I would go through easily 15 shots, Sambuca shots and then moving on to vodka tonics and having a few beers. But then the Coke at that point would be going right through the roof. And I'd be consuming coke as much as I could. And that would be when it goes into a nightclub. And then I'd be leaving the nightclub and then going on to some nightclubs that started at four in the morning. Four in the morning. That partied on till seven in the morning. And then I'd be going back to my flat, usually with some girls, and even with some of the guys, and just having a the, carry on the party there. And by 11 o'clock a.m. the following day, I'd be getting myself showered if I hadn't gone out for a run already, and then heading on to the office and trying to maintain some sort of stability in the office that I could actually then set up for the following day. And then the whole thing would happen again. And that is the process. The process is complete madness because it's like you just get so heavily into the excessive side of it that you get taken over. You know, the addiction's there and it just wants you to pursue. You think about you know, going out for a run and then going into the office and not having a drink. It doesn't happen. You want to get out there and just keep drinking. When you start drinking again, it starts the process again. That's what it is. That's what it is to be an alcoholic. That's what it is to be an addict. And that's what I was. And that's where the book takes the reader down the line of exactly what addiction is about. And that's why the hunger is out there in the masses. And I am just putting it forward, a raw, honest account of what addiction is about. And that's what it's about. And once it gets you, you're in.